Okay, in conclusion, I want to touch on one quick thing and then we're going to, to bow out here. Uh, Do versus Jutsu, the two different styles in martial arts, the two different paths that you can go on. Each path has its own beginning, each path has its own end. Neither one of them are different, neither one of them are wrong, they're just different from each other. Do in the Japanese means the way or the path, the path to enlightenment, the path to higher being, the path to, it's a spiritual connotation to it, the way, the path. Uh, jutsu means, it means the art, but it means the art in a way of we're on the battlefield, this is the art of killing you. That's the difference there. So when we're out there, say you go to these, you see these different people studying, you see Iaido, Kendo, Iaijutsu, Kenjutsu, you'll see Aikido, Aikido, Aikijutsu, same thing, same idea. Now what the Do people are using as far as they're using it to gain a better self. It ain't nothing to do with fighting, they don't care about it the fighting aspect of it. Aikido, uh, the man that invented Aikido didn't even believe in violence at all. It's totally a non-violent system. Their philosophy was that an enemy is simply a misguided friend. Beautiful philosophy, nothing wrong with that. But the Do styles, all the things you see that they do, they're not oriented toward fighting. There's a lot of form. We gotta tie the hakama just right. We gotta tie the belt just right. We gotta bow just properly so. We gotta follow this procedure. We gotta follow that procedure. We gotta do all of these things just the way the master told us because we want to gain this, this inner self, this inner nirvana. We want to get to this higher place. Jutsu style, the style of the path that I've always followed, has got to do with fighting. A lot of people don't like to hear the words fighting involved in martial arts, but let's get realistic about it here. These arts were developed on the battlefield by samurai fighting for their lives. They killed people with them and they used them to survive. Now, the jutsu style and the martial arts style and philosophies that I follow deal with the fighting aspect. Yes, we like to tie the hakama properly, we like to wear the belt properly, we like to do the formalities, but we don't get wrapped up in it. We don't get so wrapped up in the form and formality of this little bow or that little bow or how you uh, bow to this or bow to that. It's more about, okay, let's put all the other stuff aside and let's fight. This is what it boils down to. I got the weapon in my hand, by God, let's go. And then I'm, I'm be ready to go for it. And if I'm ready to charge and I can exert my spirit in that and I can fight. Masashi said that when the two people come together, anybody can talk a big game. They can all talk, oh, well, I'm gonna do this or I'm gonna do that. And I've had all this type of competition experience. Uh, but competition doesn't have anything to do with real fighting. You miss by that much and you're dead. One of the examples that I've always used to teach is you got master so-and-so that studied in the Tokyo school for 45 years. He thinks he's the best thing going. All the students give him all the respect that he ever needs. And I can give you some stories about some real life examples of some of this later on. Uh, you get, but you know, they get wrapped up into master so-and-so signed my rank certificate. I belong to the Tokyo Association of Genuine Sword Masters. I am, I have arrived. I have reached a place of status. It's a little more on the Doe philosophy. You get out there and you get some little street punk. In the old days, of course, it was a street punk with a sword. And he ain't wearing his hakama right. His hair's not combed right. He didn't bow properly. He didn't know the form. He didn't, his clothes are not just the way they're supposed to be. But when he draws that sword, he does it that much faster than the master who's been studying for 45 years. Now you decide which one's the better warrior. Uh, Miyamoto Musashi was born with congenital eczema. He had scars all over his head. He had such disregard for the society that had basically pushed him down that he didn't even take a bath anymore. He was just ready to fight. And he became the greatest swordsman that ever lived without any of the, the formalities. Although, like I said, we're going to keep the formalities to a certain extent, but I want you to focus on you and that blade. That's what's important. Uh, we will get, don't ever get into the, oh, well, I'm somebody good now because somebody else signed the rank certificate or I belong to, you know, the big organization or the pompous group, you know, it's all got to do with you and that weapon when you get down to it. So concentrate on the weapon, digest it, make it you, and express it back out with power. It's been a pleasure having you this afternoon. It's been a pleasure teaching you. I look forward to getting together at some of the seminars, and I look forward to our next DVD.